Habakkuk 2, chapter 4, the Bible reads, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. So we see there in verse number 5, it says that, or in verse number 4, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright. So the person who's proud, they're not walking uprightly. They're not walking the way they should be. It says, but the just, those that do, are upright. It says, they'll live by faith. And verse number 5 says, yea, also, in addition to this, because he transgresseth by wine, because he's a drunkard, because he's drinking wine and getting drunk, he is a proud man. That's the reason. Now, I've known a lot of people that they could be pretty meek and humble when they're sober, but they start drinking and watch out. They get that spirit in them and now all of a sudden they've got more boldness. They've got false boldness because they're drinking these spirits. That's why they're called spirits. You go to the store where you say wine and spirits or, or beer and spirits because you're getting another spirit. It's not the spirit of God. It's a spirit from Satan when you drink wine, when you drink that alcohol. But when these people will drink, all of a sudden they'll start to become more bold and they'll get more proud. Right? A lot of people will, it'll cause them to get into fights and to do things that they wouldn't normally do. But when they transgress by wine, they're a proud man. And then jump down to verse number 15. This is going to segue into my next section on pride. Verse 15 of Habakkuk 2. Now, this is a verse you're going to want to highlight in your Bible because this demonstrates a truth here that I think is very important that we all need to see and we need to hear. Verse number 15, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. So for earlier in the chapter, we saw the person transgressing by wine and being a proud man. And then in verse 15, look what it says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink. And look at the pronouns that are used here. His neighbor, there's a man who has a neighbor that puttest thy bottle, thy, to him. So the man neighbor giving another man neighbor drink and makest him drunken also. So this proud drunk man giving his neighbor drink that thou mayest look on their nakedness. It's the proud, drunk man trying to get alcohol to another man to look on their nakedness. Watch out for that, folks. Watch out for the proud sodomite that's trying to get people drunk because that's one of the ways that they, that they are able to um, attack their victims is by getting them inebriated and getting them to a position to where they can't do anything about it and they're just setting a trap for people. Another reason just to avoid alcohol altogether because of the people that lay traps with the alcohol. But Habakkuk 2.15 talks about men giving, man giving his neighbor, which is another man, a, a drink to try to look on their nakedness. Turn to Malachi, just a few more pages to the right. Malachi chapter 3. It's the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi chapter number 3. And we're going to look at verse number 14. Malachi 3.14 says, Ye have said, It is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept His ordinance, and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And look at this. Look at verse 15. And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt God are even delivered. Is this not a scripture that applies to today's society perfectly? It says, now we call the proud happy. What's another word for happy? Gay. Gay is a word that means happy. These days it doesn't. But now we're, we're talking about people 
who are happy or who are proud is gay. And what do the, what do the gays do? They have a gay pride parade. Right? The sodomites, the homos. They have their gay pride parade. And the world calls them gay. Oh, they're just gay. No, they're not gay. They're a sodomite. They're a homosexual. They're a reprobate. They're an abomination. But we, the world, call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. They're exalted. Oh, you're supposed to love them. Oh, we're supposed to protect them. No. Not at all. They that work wickedness need to be judged. Turn, if you would, to Romans chapter 1. Just a few more pages. Keep on going. Past the four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and Romans. Romans chapter number 1. We're going to see the proud attribute of the homos. We saw that in Malachi 3, verse 15. We call the proud happy, and they that work wickedness are set up. But here is the the biblical verse that, that proves that the sodomite is proud all, without already just knowing that out of, out of daily life and what you see um, in, in the world out there. Look at, we're going to look real quickly here at verse number 24. It says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. So this is talking about God giving up on the men and women to dishonor their bodies between themselves and to do those things which are not convenient, to, to defile their bodies, to commit these acts of homosexuality between themselves because God has given them up and he's given them over to a reprobate mind, which we see here in verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. God gave them over to that reprobate mind, that rejected mind, to do those things which are not convenient. He's given up on them. And then it continues here in verse 29, giving the attributes, the further attributes of the reprobate, of the sodomite. It's a continuation that the sentence didn't even end from verse 28. Just like they didn't like to keep God in their knowledge, God didn't keep them in his knowledge and he gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Verse 29 describes them being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful. These are all the attributes that go along with the reprobate. And then it says proud, boasters, right? You're boasting because you're proud. You're bragging. They're proud. Inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, and on and on. We see there the proud attribute of the reprobate.